One of the most important challenges which have arisen in recent years concerns cross-border conflicts. By cross-border conflicts, we mean non-international armed conflicts that originate in the territory of one state but spill onto the territory of neighboring states. States fighting against an armed group in their own territory might carry out acts of hostilities against members of that armed group in the territory of neighboring states, where those fighters took refuge and for which they might launch or prepare attacks. No real problem arises when the neighboring state does not oppose the foreign military intervention and when the hostilities resulting from such intervention reach by themselves the threshold of a non-international armed conflict. If the host state consents, there will be a second non-international armed conflict, triggering the application of IHL in the whole territory of the neighboring states. Problems of classification can arise if the level of violence carried out by the intervening state does not reach the threshold required for a separate non-international armed conflict. However, state practice and scholarship seems to agree that although they take place outside the territory of the state where the conflict takes place, IHL remains applicable to isolated incidents of violence. This solution seems reasonable. It is difficult to imagine that the crossing of a border by the member of an armed group would grant that member immunity from attack. It does not contradict IHL either. If you look at the text, Article 3 applies to non-international armed conflict occurring in the territory of one of the high contracting parties. Similarly, Additional Protocol 2 provides that it applies to non-international armed conflict, which takes place in the territory of a high contracting party. If we interpret these provisions narrowly, then it seems that the armed conflict must be geographically limited to the territory of one state. However, this is seen as a restrictive interpretation, and the preparatory work of the conventions suggests that it is not what was meant. The interpretation that prevails today and which best conforms to the object and purpose of IHL is the provisions simply specify that only states' parties to the treaty are bound by it. In other words, it's only a reminder that Common Article 3 and Additional Protocol 2 apply vis-à-vis -vis states party to the Geneva Conventions. In light of the near universal acceptance of the Geneva Conventions, it would appear that the qualification has lost all meaning. So it, se it seems admitted today that the law of non-international armed conflict applies not only to armed conflicts within the territory of one state, but to armed conflicts which spill out onto the territory of neighboring states. However, it remains unsettled whether IHL applies throughout the whole territory of the neighboring state concern or if that application is more limited.